because there's a lot of parts to clean on my lathe project, I've been talked into buying an ultrasonic cleaner. So does it work? And was it worth it? I got post. So this is the ultrasonic cleaner which I ordered. That's interesting. It says up, keep upright. And this is upside down in the box. Oh well, let's hope it doesn't matter too much. So this is your standard 10 litre ultrasonic parts washer or deep fryer. Make some more fish and chips. Power cord. Instructions. Socket. They use a pretty nice checkerboard style etched uh, stainless there. That looks kind of cool. 40 amps. No, that can't be 40 amps. That's model 40A. 10 litre capacity. Frequency 40 kilohertz. And the heating power doesn't say. Nice little parts tray. Now rather than reading the instructions, I watched about 10 YouTube videos and it seems like one of the coolest ways of using one of these things is just put, just put water in the ultrasonic cleaner and then put your parts in some sort of a close container with whichever uh, cleaning fluid you, you've decided to use and then you don't mess up the, the tank and don't have to drain it as often. Now before I plug it in, let's take a quick look at the safety instructions. Don't keep heating without water, nor supervised. Hmm. So don't keep heating when you're doing supervision. Hmm. Got some issues with the chinglish there. Please power off the controls and wait for normal temperature or water before drainage. You have to wait for either normal temperature or wait for water before drainage. Yeah. Okay, let's flick this on power comes on that's a good thing I filled it with warm water already see it's uh, currently got 40 degree water so it's trying to heat five minute timer good the ultrasonic module seems to be working so for the first cleaning trick what I've got here are the leveling feet of the Shoblin they're pretty disgusting covered in some sort of gungy sticky sort of coolant grease now if anyone actually reads the instructions of these things, what you'll find is they'll say you don't use anything combustible, which is like solvents, or anything which is caustic. Yeah, and I get that. I'm not going to fill this with petrol and then turn it on and watch my house burn down. This is just plain water, but what I will use, because I saw it on the internet and we've got to believe everything we see on the internet, once you put the solvent into a closed container and then buzz it, the risk's minimized. So in cleaning oily, gungy parts, you basically got three options. You're either going to use a detergent or you're going to use some sort of a caustic solution, caustic soda, sodium hydroxide, whatever you want to call it, or you're going to use a polar solvent, anything from petrol, naphtha, diesel. We're going to start off first with barbecue cleaner. This stuff will be, be sodium hydroxide based. Basically warm it up, put it on your grill and let it take the gunge off. I think what we're going to do is have a start off with about roughly 10% 10, 10 as a starter. This by the way is ancient. It's been in this house longer than I have and I've been here 8 years. So I'm assuming it's probably 20 years old. But I've used it on the barbecue and it worked great. Let's float this in. And turn it on. Sure makes a horrible sound, doesn't it? One thing we are seeing is that that container is the lids not sealed. That's not good. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put your fingers into an ultrasonic bath. Didn't hurt. Five minutes later. 
All right, that's five minutes of whizzing in the ultrasonic bath. Let's whip those out and have a look at them. Just wash the, the stuff off. It's certainly a lot cleaner. Much, much cleaner. There's a bit of gunge there that didn't quite fall off yet, but that's already loosened up. But otherwise, they're pretty much perfectly clean. That first one at least. Okay, the second one's still got a bit more gunge stuck down in the threads. So I'd say for little stuff like this, it works really well. I'll put one of them back in, the one that was still gunged up, and put in the other ones and give them a shot as well. A few inches later. I must say, it certainly does what it advertises. All these parts are looking great. These screws all had a lot of gunge stuck in their heads. None of that left. Five minutes in the barbecue cleaner at 50 degrees Celsius and everything comes out clean as a whistle. Huh? Right, let's step it up to the next level. This is the cast iron back bearing cover from the Shoblin. And it's got kind of this sort of caked on rubber gunge from the big rubber belt. So we'll put that in a plastic bag, pour in some of that uh, caustic, seal the bag, throw it in the fryer and see what comes out, huh? Five minutes later. Well, that's cooked. Let's see what it come out like. Look at that. It came out clean as a whistle. Wow, I really thought that rubber would be more difficult to remove than that, but it's come out spotless. And that was just one five minute buzzing. I mean, look at that, that is perfect. You know, now my only regret is I didn't buy a bigger ultrasonic cleaner so I could throw the whole barbecue in. That would have been perfect. The next thing I'm curious about is rust removal. This uh, Shoblin Axis Drive pulley is quite rusty. So let's throw that in. And we're gonna use just standard household vinegar. Cheapest, nastiest stuff I could find. Costs like 60 cents a litre. So there we go, bag of bike pedal and rusty pulley. Five minutes later. So five minutes are up. This is the rusty job. Well, there's definitely rust in the water, so that's a good sign. Uh oh. I just remembered. You're not supposed to use caustic with aluminium or zinc. I guess that's a zinc based alloy in the middle and an aluminium around the outside. Oh well. Yeah, I should have just used detergent on that one. I'm now looking at the rust removal. Well, it started, but it's not finished. So let's throw that back in. Now after a second soak, it seems to be coming along quite nicely. The other pedal, I'll just put in some dishwashing liquid. And then fill it with hot water. Five minutes later. Right, let's check out that pedal I just threw in normal detergent. Wow, look at that, huh? I mean, there's a bit of gunge still right up inside there, but the rest of the pedals come out pretty darn clean. That's pretty impressive. Just household detergent in the ultrasonic cleaner. Cool. Use the right fluid for the job. This chain's a real greasy mess. Let's put that in the soup. Right, let's check out that chain. This is the same mix of barbecue cleaner and water I used yesterday, so it was already dirty before I started. Uh, it's not clean yet. 
I wonder if that cleaner's now worn out. Well, the cheap ultrasonic cleaner does a really good job of cleaning moderately dirty, oily stuff, so let's give it a, a real challenge. This is a very coked up piston from a Russian M14P radial aircraft engine. You can see there's scungy as. Now, unfortunately, being aluminium, I can't just put it in the barbecue cleaner, which, you know, the caustic works most effectively, but that's not going to happen. I don't really have anything else uh, that's very aggressive to you, so let's see what happens with very grubby piston, just some dishwashing liquid, warm water. A few minutes later. Well, there's the first five minutes. Water in the bag starting to look a bit gungy, that's good. There's Yeah, it's starting to do something. Just leave it in, another, give it another five minutes. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now ten minutes in. Well, after whizzing it three times, five minutes, it's taken off a wee bit of the coked on gunge, but not much. I'd say that uh, dishwashing liquid's really not effective for this sort of level of baked on stuff. Epilogue. It's not going to live on my workbench, I'll put it by the sink. Overall, I'm happy with it, it works as advertised, gets the parts clean, takes no effort, two thumbs up. Thanks a lot for watching.